Hey everyone, how you doing? So, quick question. When you think of rare events and circumstances in gaming, what comes to mind? Some of you might be thinking about the improbable nature of obtaining the Mythic Fish Trophy in Fortnite as an example. Or maybe you're thinking on the more reasonable side of things, with a chance of getting a mending book and an end city in Minecraft. Regardless of what you think of, we can all agree on one thing. There's a few things in gaming you're not likely to see. And that's something that makes a franchise like Plants vs. Zombies so interesting, because there's several things that can happen here that would not be likely to ever occur for any normal player. So that's the topic of today's video. I want to explore the world of probability in gaming, more specifically for Plants vs. Zombies as a franchise. This video alone has taken quite a while to put together, so if you want to see more videos like this, let me know down in the comments. But as for now, let's dive in with... We're starting off light with a rather simple stat, and what's also the highest one in this video. Yep. Okay, so the Zen Garden alone is a very interesting place in of itself, since there's actually quite a few bits of probability in what plants you get from each type of level. But because it would be too easy to cover, I decided on only including it once in this video, with that being on the chance you'll get a specific direction facing Marigold with a specific color from Tweety Dinkles. The colors are something that's only present on a few different ports of this game, can't remember where it isn't, but assuming that you have optimal conditions, the chance of getting the Marigold I threw into the title of this section is 1 in 22, which is roughly a 4.545% chance. It's not likely, but it could still happen. So we're starting this video off with a low percent. You can only imagine how much lower it's going to get as we move along, but we'll ease in more with our next percent being... <laughs> Alright, I want you to imagine you logged into Garden Warfare 2 for the first time ever, and you have nothing but free packs to open. One of these packs will always be a character pack. So, if you were to open this pack, what would be the chance of you getting, say, Agent P? About 1 in 104. So there's actually a reason why it isn't 1 in 121, and that's simply because 17 of the variants in this game are either legendaries, which are unattainable in normal packs, or specific variants that require specific milestones to be met, like getting the Deluxe Edition for Z7, or being rank 313 before 2017 for Unicorn Chomper. I still cannot believe PopCap thought that was okay. But yeah, with a roughly 0.96% chance, the odds are definitely stacked up against you in this circumstance. But even so, that's still a little more likely than... Getting the exact adventure plant outfit you want in PvZ2 shop if you have none. Now, there's a few things to be accounted for for this probability to work. For one, you need to get Torchwood, and Torchwood is completely free to all PvZ2 players nowadays. So I threw in his outfits because it just made sense. Additionally, I did not factor in any seasonal outfits, because if I did, we would have to look at a lot more numbers. So no, I didn't want to. That being said, I still believe this base number is pretty crazy, especially since PvZ2 hasn't really been working on nearly as many costumes recently, so seeing this is pretty interesting. But you want to know something a little more interesting? Okay, we're starting to get into some pretty unlikely territory, though I'm sure this has happened for a few of you at least once. If you've played console PvZ1, you're out of luck if you haven't, unless you played iPad, I guess? Anyways, the Nut Allergic Zombie is a very fascinating case, because you've likely encountered this one at least a few times if you've played the game at all. But seeing the death animation is what makes it so special, since you're rarely going to be using Walnuts and Tall Nuts as your main defense for the game. Let's be real, most skilled PvZ1 players are going to be using pumpkins, but regardless, encountering the zombie in of itself is rare. Though due to how PvZ1 weighs zombies, this stat might be just a little bit off. Still though, you will eventually encounter the zombie, though you might not do this for this next one. Okay, so imagine you could place any land plant on any tile in this level. 
Which plants would you place first? Most of you would probably choose either a stalling plant or a sun producer of some kind. But in actuality, there might be one person who decides that they want to be a little bit different. And that's what this hypothetical is about. If you let a computer place down a map every single plant in the game on every single tile, they would place an imitated garlic in the middle section column of the middle row one time out of 16,425 placements. Is that a very weird statistic? Yes, but it's also pretty interesting. Now again, this is a complete hypothetical, but I think that's what makes this video so interesting. And it's also why the next number is gonna make things even more complex. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, this number is insane. So let me explain what this is about before you guys get confused. Battle for Neighborville, despite being a rather tame game in a lot of aspects, still got a ton of customization for the cast, primarily with the outfit system. See, with the lack of variance in this installment, what PopCap did to try and make it stand out was add outfits to every character in the game. And the character with by far the most is Chomper, sitting at 11. 11 entire outfits, nobody comes close. So when you add up 11 outfits, 56 total hats, accounting each spectrum hat color as its own thing, 4 accessories, with 22 of the hats not being compatible with those, 14 organics, and 14 mouths in general, that leads to the insane number you see now. The decimal is so long that I decided to not even bother reading it. Now, I will admit that I could be missing a hat for this character, but I am like 99% sure I have every single cosmetic for Chomper and BFN. Even still, I think it's safe to say that you'll probably not find many people wearing your exact Chomper outfit, but at least you still have a chance to encounter it, which is something I can't say for. Okay, let me be transparent about this statistic. This is the only one in the video that I truly cannot explain well because it could either be off or wrong in some way. Like I mentioned a little bit ago, PvZ1 weighs zombie spawns in a very weird way, which is why I'm a little unsure on this one. For the sake of this video though, we'll go ahead and assume that zombie yetis spawn at the generally agreed amount of 1 in 4,000 zombies beyond 4-10 in the second playthrough. So what does this mean? Well, if you got, say, two yetis in one level, which actually can happen, but I've mostly seen only talk about it and no real proof, that would even out to the number you saw. Now, I'm no NASA engineer, I hardly know if that would actually be an accurate estimate. But regardless, your chance of seeing this happen on a level that isn't 4-10 is next to impossible. Kind of. I'm sure in endless runs, there's been multiple Yeti sightings in the past, but regardless, this is insane. And I think with that number, I'm going to end this video here. I'm not sure if you could tell, but finding the stats for a lot of this was pretty difficult, considering how the PvZ community doesn't really track a lot of this stuff, especially BFN. That was a nightmare and a half. So if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you support it by liking it and commenting what you thought of it. If I messed up any of these numbers, please tell me. Also, some big shoutouts go to my extra YSI channel members, those being Dan B, Glitch into Code 867, Nicholas Vankoski, Sleepy, Song, Sophie Gaming, and Wapfa. Alongside my one normal member, thank you all so much for your support, you rock. And as for me here, I'm gonna go farm endless mode in PvZ1 to find some more yetis. So I'll see you all on my next video. Peace. Dude.